Well, Le Grand Macabre is a really big opera. It has a lot of very big events in it, like the end of the world. Um, and it seems to happen a couple of times. It's threatened a couple of times, and then we, we, we think we, maybe, we, maybe it was the end. Maybe a comet came to Earth and destroyed the whole thing. Uh, and yet everything keeps going, uh, as if there was not really any problem. Uh, it makes it such a timely opera to be, to be here and now with the threats about the Mayan calendar coming to an end in 2012. We have uh, um, scheduled some more productions of, the, uh, of this uh, show in 2012, so I hope we're able to do them. Uh, <laughs> but in the, in the meantime, you know, we had a volcano in uh, Iceland. We have a volcano in our show, too. It's, but uh, what, what is interesting to do a huge opera like this uh, on a stage like the, uh, the, the a concert hall type of stage is you have to do it in a very small way. So um, everything that we're doing with these miniatures volcanoes that explode, they come, they come, they're supposed to enter your, your mind's eye, your imagination, and, and you make them big. Uh, you make them fill in the gaps like uh, the way your mind works. It is a mindscape. For me, this opera is effective as a as a memento mori, uh, an operatic form of a memento mori, uh, which was the kind of still life in the old days where they had a skull and an old book and a you know a spilled glass of wine and a candle that had burned out and all these things that are there specifically to remind you in, in a sort of allegorical way that time is fleeting. You know, carpe the diem. Be be present in your in your life because it it it, it uh, who knows when your time will come. And so, in the middle, make the most of it. And uh, and that's a, it's a wonderful message I, uh, to be told in such a farcical and humorous and dark dark way. <laughs>